Today I got a brand new Asus VivoBook 15.6 inch laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading and some cloning. I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Asus VivoBook 15.6 inch laptop. Uh, it's the model X512D. Uh, it's got 15.6 inch full 1080p display. Uh, does not have a lighted keyboard. Over here we have USB port, we have HDMI, we got a C-type USB headphone jack, it's got a micro SD card slot on this side. And then over on this side we have two USB ports on this side. So what I'm going to do today is a little upgrading. Currently uh, it came out of the box with 4 gigs of DDR4 memory. Um, I'm sorry, 8 gigs of DDR4 memory and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Well, the customer wants to beef up the RAM a little bit, um, we're going to take out the one memory stick that's in there and replace it with a 16 gig, so they'll end up with 20 gigs. I explained the pros and cons to them of doing that, but they want 20 gigs, so that's what they're going to get. Then I'm going to clone the existing SSD onto a brand new Crucial P5 NVMe SSD. These are really fast drives. It's a 2280 size, but I use these a lot and I'm real happy with them. They perform pretty well. So I am going to clone uh, before I do anything. There's no customer data on it, so I don't really have to worry about that, but the clone should go fine because it's just a factory install of Windows 10. So the program I'm going to use today is Macrium Reflex 7. It's free to download. I'll have a link down below where you can pick that up free online. Basically, you're just going to open up your browser, go to macrium.com, then just go to the products and choose the free edition. Download it, install it. It's pretty, that, pretty much that simple. What I'm going to use to do the cloning with is a USB enclosure adapter here. There's many different types of these, but this particular one, I have several of them that I like that I use every day in the shop. They've never failed me. So you're going to take your drive, simply plug it into the slot, and you're going to push it down over the little rubber grommet right there. There's no screws, no tools required. Just pop it in there. This is an actual enclosure. You can leave a drive in there and use it like an external drive, but I like using them for cloning. There are different types available you can get. There's some cheap ones. I tried them all. You got some that are just for SATA M.2 drives. You got NVMe. You got some that do both. So don't, don't skimp when you buy one of these. But this one here that I'm using, I like the best. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it right into my USB port, any USB port. And now it recognizes it. So I'm going to get the cloning process started here. So what I'm going to do is open up the program, Macrium Reflect. And during the installation of the program, it'll ask you to register. You can uncheck the box so you don't have to register and you can still go on and use the software. So this is the current disk, the 512. This is the partition layout. <clears throat> so I'm going to, right below it, it says clone this disk. So I'm going to click on that. And then it brings up the layout. We're going to select the disk to clone to, in this case, our USB adapter here. So click on that. It's right here. Just click it once. Now it's in there, empty, ready for you to put partitions on. So what you can do with this software is just click on these partitions and drag. Watch, I'll grab the first one here, click it, drag it right down. Click the next one, drag it right down. And the main one here, C, we want this partition as big as we can because we're going from 512 to 1 terabyte. If I just leave it like that, you're going to have a lot of unallocated wasted space. So I'm going to enlarge this, leaving about 800 megabytes left for this last recovery partition. So what you do is click on cloned partition properties right here. And then the resizer comes up. So over here, we want to end up with free space, about 800 megabytes for that last partition. So I'm going to change the gigabytes to megabytes. I'm going to type in 800 and hit OK. So now we got just a hair over 800 megabytes. I'm going to drag the last partition down. Boom, we're good. So I'm going to click on this, max it out just to make sure. All right, so now you're good to go on the clone. So we're going to click on Next. And always make sure if you do have data on your laptop when you're doing this, that you do have your data backed up before you attempt this, just in case. You mess something up, so I'll click on next. And always make sure you're disconnected from the internet when you're doing a clone like this. The other thing I like to, I like to do 
is just go to your um, just go to your run box or task manager and go into your configuration utility. Go to startup, open the task manager. Anything other than the cloning software, go ahead and disable during the cloning process. Just better chance of a successful clone. Um, you just, like I said, just leave the cloning software enabled. You can turn that stuff back on label, or later. Same with services. Click on the services tab. Hide all Microsoft services. You can disable all these except the cloning software. In my case, it would be Macrium. If you got a lot of apps and programs running, in this case, I really don't. So I'm going to cancel out of that. So after you do that, actually do that before you even start this. I'm going to click on Next. And here it's just showing you how everything's going to be laid out. We're going to click on Finish over here. And this is just your backup. You can leave all them defa defaults. You can name your clone if you want, but we're going to hit OK. Now it's going to, you can see down here, it says clone has started in the lower corner there. Now being that there's not a ton of data and files and pictures and all that fun stuff on here, the clone should go pretty quick. But you can see it's going to, I'm going to wait and let it get started here just to make sure everything starts good. It's just doing all the little partitions right now. I've used this program a lot. I, have, I use Acronis mostly, Acronis True Image. So now the, now the overall progress has started, so I'm not going to bore you with all this. When it gets close to the end, I'll come back and I'll, and I'll wrap it up. Then I'm going to go ahead and open the laptop, install the new SSD as well as the new memory, and should have a little bit faster computer. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I just finished cloning. Took about 10 minutes. Just wrapping things up here. at 99%. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, before you start cloning this this way that I'm doing here, it might be a good idea to go ahead and go into your power options and disable sleep mode. You don't want your computer going to sleep. So it said it took about 15 minutes. So I'm just going to close everything out, including the Macrium. If you want to look real quick in your this PC. So now you can see we got two OS's. We got our new one terabyte and the one we're going to take out the 512. So all we got to do now is shut down the laptop. I'm going to disconnect my drive here. Done with that. Gonna pop the SSD out. Nice and warm, which is fine. When you handle these, try not to touch the connectors, the pins on the end there, if you can help it. So. Go ahead and shut it down. Just want to make sure it's all the way powered off before you start opening it up. And as with any project like this, I always tell my viewers, make sure you're protected against static electricity. Use an anti-static wristband, which you can get real cheap on Amazon or any place like that, or an anti-static mat. A wooden service would probably be best. My bench tops and my floors in my shop are all anti-static. They're designed for this kind of work. Uh, 25 years, I've never had a problem. And just some good old common sense. So I'm going to close the lid. I've already took the liberty of taking all the screws out. I used a number zero Phillips screwdriver. And a good quality tip is really important so you don't booger up the heads of your screws. Don't go cheap on your tools. Um, I say that all the time. Just use good good quality tools, but a number zero Phillips will get all the screws out. Um, on this, on Asus is, I think, the only company left that does this. They use different length screws on their holes. In this model, you can say, I got them laid out here on my little magnetic pad. I use, keeps my screws nice and organized. The four screws in the front are, are one length, they're short. Um, these, this screw, this one, this one, and the two in the corners by the hinges are a different length little longer and this one single screw right here is even longer so you got three different lengths of screws just make sure you put the right screws back in the right hole guys guys so I'm gonna go ahead and take my plastic spudger tool here and I'll have a link down below where you can get these online you can get a little bag of them for a couple of bucks these are pretty tight sealed along the the bottom pan to the palm rest so you want to get I found that on these models somewhere up here in this corner is a good area to start just don't use anything metal you'll you'll leave nasty tool marks. So we're going to get our little spudger started in the seam here, if possible, just like that, and then just slowly and gently 
kind of working along here. Don't get in a hurry. If you feel too much resistance, stop. And just remember your lid. Don't be squeezing on the lid because you can damage your screen from the outside. So now that we've got it started, and I'm not scratching the lid, like I said, my bench tops are all protected for this kind of work. Be careful around these openings here with your tool. You don't go in there and booger up any of the connections. You can see there's a lot of stuff there. All right, so we got a good start on it. I'm gonna have to do it, actually. I've done these before, so if you keep a very gentle upward pressure on it. It should come fairly easy, just like that. But along the back, sometimes it can be a little stubborn. So I take a tool like this. You can't get it started. Don't just be bending it up. You don't want to do that. Usually if you can get a corner started here. Second guys, get my tool. Get my fingers in there. See right here, you can see how it kind of started to lift up a little bit right here and along the back here. I'm going to take my tool and just, I'm just kind of popping it up and you see it pretty much came up on its own there. So I'll get those out of the way. <clears throat> now we should be able to lift this right off of here. Just like that. You have to, before anything else, remember that your battery is still connected. So we are going to disconnect our battery. There's a couple of different types of battery connectors on these laptops. This particular one, here's the connector right here. This little metal bar here, if you want to remove that, you can, but you don't really need to if you're careful. But this connector here pulls straight up. It comes straight up off, but there's a little metal clip right here. It's, it's barely, it's kind of slid, locks it, it's slid over top of the connector. So I'm going to take my little tool here and carefully just push it back, if you can see it moving there. You don't want to go too far with it. Just enough to get this lifted up. I'm not using metal tools, as you can see. But again, if you want to take out these two, or actually three screws here, you can lift that bar out of the way, which I might have to do, but I'm going to try not to. So there, see I got the battery disconnected now, okay? But just don't go pushing that clip out really hard, because come flying off the motherboard and battery still connected you're going to see sparks so now that we got it disconnected guys as an added precaution i like to open it up carefully just remember that it's open you got a screen here i'm going to hit the power button a couple of times so i can discharge any residual current that's flowing through them circuits all right so we should be good so here's our four gig stick of memory as well as the four gigs that's on board i'm going to get this little protector off of here now to get the ram out i guess i can leave that there you got these little metal clips on the side you're just going to slightly gently push them out gently like that and the ram will come straight up just like that pull it out of the slot well, this is wrapped all the way around so we're going to get that out of there. And I'm using TimeTech Time Tech memory. I got a 16 gig DDR4 2400 because that's what the onboard RAM is, it's 2400. Get our RAM out of there. And let's just go ahead and wrap this in there, I guess. For aesthetics. I'm going to put it back in the slot, same way we took it out. Just make sure it goes down all the way. It's just a little heat protector there, guys. Big deal. So we got our new RAM, <clears throat> our new RAM in there. So now with the four on board and that, 16, we got 20 gigs of memory. Um, and over here is our NVMe drive. A little heat shield on it. We'll just leave that on there. There's one Phillips screw right here that we have to remove to get it out. This is the 512. And again, use good tools with a magnetic tip. That way you're not dropping screws on the main board. And here's our new crucial that we're going to put in its place. And we're going to leave that underneath there. Well, we're going to leave that right where it's at. And you always leave that tape or paper on there. That's, again, for heat. I'm going to plug it right back in. Interesting. I always do that. Alright, where did I leave 
tighten my screw. My blind? It's right here. Sorry, guys. Jeez, losing my mind. All right, so we're going to put the little tiny screw back in the hole. too tight just enough to hold it in place so hopefully we got a good clone and boot up now when I turn this back on for the first time it might not pulse right away that's normal when you put in especially new RAM the BIOS is trying to read the RAM it'll take sometimes a little extra time so we got to reconnect our battery carefully here just got to line up the pins and push it gently straight down just make sure it goes down just use your finger and again, remember, once you connect that battery, you're going to have juice potentially going through those circuits. So we're going to slide our clip back. I'm just going to use my finger. Make sure I'm going to get my tool in there. All right, so we're connected. You can see it barely goes over top of the clip there, the, little, the, the edge of the metal, metal clip right there. Okay. So everything's reconnected. And yes, this is a two and a half inch bay over here. People ask me all the time. They don't, these models don't ship with the mounting caddy and the cable. Um, they're very hard to find. If you contact like ASUS support, um, I'm sure they can probably help you out find one of those. So let's go ahead and put our pan back on. And I'm not gonna put all the screws back in until I know everything's good. Usually the last thing I do is put the screws back in. We're just gonna snap it good in place. So everything's where it's supposed to be. Again, when you're squeezing this, don't squeeze real hard on the top side. Try to keep it along the edge here. You don't want to booger up your screen. All right. So I'm going to plug in my AC adapter. And I'm going to hit the power button. And hopefully it don't blow up. Like I said, you got to be patient. When you turn these on for the first time with new RAM, they all do it. Acer, HP, oh, that's not bad. <clears throat> and it looks like it's booting. And then, of course, I'm going to put the latest version of Windows 10, the 20H2 edition, on here because they never come out of the box up to date, of course. And now we got everything on it that came from the factory, as far as all the drivers and the other extra software they put on here. Let's go take a quick look here in the task manager. Just type in task and hit enter. We'll go to performance up here. Click on memory. You can see now we got 20 gigs of RAM. Now we got 16 gigs available instead of 3.1 or whatever it was. Okay. And I'll go to File Explorer. Uh, actually, this PC. And here's our new one terabyte hard drive with our OS. So we had a good clone. Um, so that's how you do it. Again, there's different types of cloning software. The Macri and Reflex 7 is still free. Uh, Acronis True Image, uh, the, the paid version for like 39 bucks works really well as well and many others. So I hope the video was helpful, guys. I appreciate you watching. If you like it, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. That'd be great. Thanks for watching and have a great day.